Hello everyone, I am Dr. Bridge Makkar from Delhi and it's indeed a great pleasure to be part of this uh, Rangde Neela workshop. So I am going to speak in a nutshell about obesity. So we have to understand that obesity is not a simply lifestyle disorder, it is a serious chronic disease. If you look at the definition of obesity, obesity is defined as abnormal accumulation or excessive accumulation of fat in body which is harmful for health. So by definition, this excessive fat accumulation in body is harmful for health. And that is very much indicative that it's a serious illness. Now, important thing is we cannot measure fat directly. So we focus on measuring body weight. And we also calculate something called body mass index based on height and weight measurements, which gives you a cutoff points by which you can define obesity. So in a normal individual, a body mass index should be between 18 to 23 in Indian setting. 23 to 25 kilograms per meter square of body mass index is considered as overweight and a body mass index of more than 25 kg per meter square is considered uh, obesity. Now obesity is a major uh, healthcare epidemic globally. There is a tremendous increase in the people who are overweight or obese worldwide and India is not left behind. In India, if you look at the figures, the number of individuals with obesity has tripled over the last two decades and almost one in five adults is overweight or obese. And if you look at the population in cities, the urban population, almost 50% of individuals have overweight or obesity. And this is a serious issue because obesity leads to increase in uh, the risk of developing many uh, comorbidities. So a number of uh, uh, healthcare societies globally and in India now recognize obesity as a disease and uh, major health organizations are actually understanding the importance of obesity as a driver for many other diseases also. Obesity uh, can cause a number of comorbidities and complications. If you look at the complications associated with obesity or the damage that happens in various tissues, organs or systems, if you go by the list, more than 200 medical conditions are associated with obesity and there is an increased risk of these conditions in people who are overweight or obese. Obesity can lead to disturbances which are related to mental health, physical health, and social health. If you look at you know, increased risk of uh, diseases, obesity appears to be a key driver for increasing prevalence of type 2 diabetes, which is a major healthcare challenge right now worldwide. Obesity leads to increase in uh, blood pressure, increase in the lipid abnormalities, increased risk of heart disease, increased risk of kidney disease, increased risk of heart failure, increased risk of number of cancers increased risk of mechanical disorders like joint problems, sleep apnea, person, you know, gets uh, difficulty in breathing during sleep and gets up and this can further increase the risk of heart disease. Also, because of the physical limitations, joint disorders, person becomes crippled, the social uh, life is compromised, the quality of life is compromised. So, there are multiple complications that are associated with obesity and therefore, obesity needs to be considered as a serious disorder and to be managed medically with the, all the uh, possible tools to cut down not only the comorbidities and the risk of mortality, but also to improve the quality of life. So when we come to uh, managing obesity, uh, there has to be a comprehensive and multifaceted approach. All people with obesity need to be treated with lifestyle interventions, which include increased physical activity and focus on healthy diet with caloric restriction. In addition, there is a need for pharmacotherapy. And if nothing works, then patient uh, may need bariatric surgery. Now, all these options need to be considered in uh, conjunction with each other and no single therapy is uh, sub, uh, considered to be adequate or appropriate for management of obesity. Now, a lot of people try to or attempt to lose weight by simply lifestyle intervention, which include diet and exercise, which are usually short-lived. Even if they lose weight, they tend to regain weight because it is not simply that 
losing calories or increasing activity will lead to a permanent loss of weight. So a comprehensive management approach is required whereby you need to have uh, lifestyle interventions in place. Pharmacotherapy helps in sustaining the lost weight and also helps in inducing weight which is not actually achievable uh, by only lifestyle interventions. So lifestyle interventions, behavior therapy, pharmacotherapy and surgery, they all are you know, various aspects of management that are required in treating obesity. In nutshell, obesity is a serious health disease. It is caused by excessive abnormal accumulation of fat in body, which is harmful for health. Managing obesity involves lifestyle interventions, behavior therapy, pharmacotherapy, and some people require bariatric surgery. And obesity should be identified as a disease, as a serious disease, which needs medical management or surgical management depending on patient requirements and should not be neglected. So this was real pleasant experience coming to this uh, workshop uh, run by uh, Mahesh ji. And important thing is, uh, you know, uh, getting in touch with the art, the kind of art that I'm seeing here and how artwork happens. Once we see just a finished painting or uh, a framed art, we can't imagine how much, uh, you know, planning, uh, background work goes into making that painting. What are the nitty gritty of it? What kind of paints are being used? I was thinking, you know, I'm not able to paint it fine, but then I realized that it has to be painted multiple times to make it smooth. Uh, how you maintain the lines, how you, uh, you know, choose the colors, what is the consistency of color? What kind of brushes? It's a different experience. And I, I think it was a good day out for me. And I'm sure uh, uh, everybody who is participating in this workshop is having similar experience. And all those who are uh, viewing us, please take a day out and visit some art place. Look at the Indian art. It is so rich, so rich heritage we have that we don't know and understand even a fraction of it. Thank you. Let us now move on to continuing medical education. And this I promise you is a very brief session titled Losing weight and keeping it off is not easy. Yes, losing weight itself is a difficult task. And if in case you are successful in accomplishing that difficult task, still maintaining the lost body weight is an extremely difficult process. It's not easy. And that is what we are going to discuss today. Look at those multiple studies. There is something which is common. All the interventions that I have listed here, they are all diet only interventions. Only diet only interventions. And what is the lesson that we have learned? The lesson that we have learned, look at the dark blue bars, and that is a mean change from baseline to the end of the study with the diet. And the light blue bars are those mean change from baseline to follow. So obviously, some of the groups have regained their lost body weight. And the other group, definitely, most of them, over a period of time, they have all regained the lost body weight. So what have we learned from all these diet only interventions. It is quite evident that the subjects have lost weight, but the summary is there is little support or evidence that diets lead to a lasting weight loss or they can have lasting health benefits. Of course, this is a statement which is so controversial and this is in sharp contrast to the popular beliefs but believe me, this is the science and this is the current evidence. 
if you are on a drastic or an aggressive diet of course you might lose weight but this is not going to have any lasting benefits so the weight management interventions as i have already said is followed by regaining the lost weight look at these studies so i have three different interventions in the same study so you have the very low calorie diet and then you have the modified diet and behavior therapy and the third one is a very low calorie diet combined with behavior therapy of course that is the best and has during the intervention resulted in significant weight loss but look at the follow up over the next 3 years 4 years and 5 years patients in the combined condition has lost significantly more weight at the end of intervention that was at the beginning but during the follow up during the follow up there was no statistically significant look at this look at the three different interventions at the end of 4 to 5 years there was statistically no significant differences between the three arms and the weight at three or five years follow up it has remained almost the same and all the subjects have regained the lost body weight so this is the science and this is the reason behind this mystery loss of weight whatever be the intervention it alters the body's homeostatic mechanism and this favors future weight regain so and this is of course the fine balance between multiple hormones and what happens when you are losing weight anorexigenic hormones such as leptin glp1 amylin is reduced the energy expenditure is reduced so metabolic adaptation makes maintaining the loss to body weight really challenging it's very challenging experience when you are losing weight and what is metabolic adaptation metabolic adaptation is a physiological process it's not a pathological process and this is characterized by changes in the levels of appetite regulating hormones as listed here and there is a reduction in the energy expenditure so what happens when the weight is lost the energy expenditure which is associated with the resting metabolic rate and the metabolic rate with the activity gets reduced so obviously there is less work when you are reduced to body weight less work must be done to maintain homeostasis or when you are moving around again you need less of energy so this is the principle when you are losing weight there is an increase in the hunger and hunger increases in response to further weight loss and these are 50 individuals being studied and look at the weight loss in the beginning and then we have assessed hunger and desire to eat at week 10 and at week 62 so there is a significant increase in the desire to eat despite weight loss there is a significant desire to eat there is a significant increase in hunger both at week 10 and at both and at week 62 so the mean loss in the completers there's a just 13.5 kg at week 10 however completers gradually regain 5.5 kg over the year increase to hunger increase in the desire to eat so i repeat increase in the hunger and increase in the desire to eat was a long lasting remaining significantly elevated even one year post diet so this is the in nutshell this is a summary so initially there is a diet induced weight loss and when the same subjects are being followed up for one year there was an increase in hunger and desire to eat that was lasting very long and remaining significantly elevated even at the end of one year post diet 
So this explains the reason why most of those subjects who were even successful in losing weight, they again gain weight after a couple of months or years. And this is another very, very interesting study. And this is those subjects, the 16 subjects who have previously have participated in the biggest loser study. And this is only to showcase the phenomenon of metabolic adaptation following weight loss. And this metabolic adaptation is there to stay. So changes in the resting metabolic rate, it promotes weight gain. When there was an average loss of 58 kilograms, you can see that at, from baseline, there is an average loss of 58 kilograms at week 30. The participants, when they have been followed up, they regained 41 kilograms at the end of, not weeks, but at the end of six years. So at the end of six years, they have again regained the body weight. By week 30, the average resting metabolic rate had reduced by 6, 10 kilocalories per day. And at the end of six years, it has been reduced to 704 kilocalories per day. Day. And this is metabolic adaptation. And metabolic adaptation was defined as the residual resting metabolic rate after adjusting the changes in the body composition and age. So, what has happened at the end of six years of this study? The participants have demonstrated a metabolic adaptation of minus 499 kilocalories per day. So this is the data. So what do you see over this slide? This is the data illustrating that metabolic adaptation counteracts. Metabolic adaptation counteracts the weight loss. And this persists over several years. Several years. So what is the solution? Is it therapy? So look at this step one. This is another way. Uh, very famous clinical trials. Step one is a randomized clinical trial comparing semaglutide against placebo. A phase three clinical trial with injectable 2.4 milligrams of semaglutide compared against matching placebo. So during this study, there was a significant reduction in the body weight in overweight and obese individuals, and that this study was conducted in subjects without diabetes. At the end of 68 weeks, semaglutide arm showed a mean weight loss of 16 percentage. So when I say 16 percentage, it is very, very significant both from a statistical and from a clinical point of view. The reason being, even 5 percent weight loss will have phenomenal benefits in reducing the uh, blood pressure, in them, reducing the blood glucose, in reducing multiple cardiovascular risk parameters. And hence, 16% weight loss with semaglutide injectable once weekly is considered highly significant. However, during the study, for the next 52 weeks, the participants were off treatment. They were denied treatment with injectable semaglutide. And they were followed up. And during the follow-up, as you can see, they have regained 60% of the weight they have previously lost. Shocking and surprising. And this indicates the issue of weight regain once the medical intervention is stopped in obesity management. So what is the take-home point? The take-home point is when the person with obesity or overweight is on a drug, they will lose weight. But once you discontinue the drug, they start regaining the weight. And this is a lesson we need to study or by heart when we are managing obesity with a drug. And what should be the objective? The long-term approach to obesity management is required, not a short-term approach. You may have an intervention with a diet or with a drug for a few months and you might weigh, lose weight. And this is a study with sibutramine and placebo. 
So you have a control and you have a distribute remain. And there is a significant weight loss at the end of six months. And the subjects are followed up. And in one hour, the subjects were continued on sibutramine. Patients in the sibutramine group, on an average, maintain their weight for another year. However, we can see that there is a slight upward incline in the weight thereafter. Even when they were on a therapy with an older drug, the subjects have started regaining the body weight. Evidence of weight maintenance with sustained medication over 68 weeks. So this is the step four clinical trial. And this is with the injectable 2.4 milligrams of semaglutide. And this is a randomized clinical trial, phase three trial to evaluate the effect of continued use of subcutaneous semaglutide against placebo on weight loss maintenance. So this is in addition to weight loss, whether injectable semaglutide is sufficient or capable or powerful enough to maintain the lost body weight or whether it can result in a sustained weight loss. So what are the take home points from this very brief learning? The current evidence from clinical trials and from the real world experience has suggests that weight maintenance is a challenging experience, especially in the long term. You may be successful in losing weight with a diet, with an aggressive dietetic intervention, but it need not be sustained. Weight loss by itself alters the body's homeostatic mechanism and this again favors weight gain. So what is the solution? Short-term approaches are not the solution. A long-term approach to obesity management is absolutely required for maintaining the lost body weight. Thank you, my dear friends. Thank you very much for being with me today. Hello everyone, today I had an unique experience. In Mumbai, I visited two great artisans who uses traditional colors for block printing and make beautiful uh, dresses and garment products out of that. They use natural colors. I had visited their uh, workplace, took a round and they have shown me how they do it and I met the artisans who are working for generations, in fact, they are into the seventh generation uh, into this business and in struggling time also they have kept it alive and really I, I should congratulate them. And while, you know, taking a tour in, in, through their work and enjoying their work and appreciating them, we had casual talks about the health issues and very surprisingly, I found that the, one of the major issues which which, which is concerning their family is obesity and their three generations have issues related to obesity and Ahmad Bhai himself, the, the main artisan who owns this place, he has obesity and he had obesity, now he has lost weight due to diabetes and his uh, granddaughter also has obesity along with his son. So um, I thought that this is one topic we should discuss because Obesity has uh, has uh, has been an epidemic and it's going to be a pandemic. Actually, it's going to involve in, include a lot of uh, other uh, fellow countrymen uh, in in coming days, coming years, and we must uh, must understand what it is all about and how to tackle it. Uh, obesity, we actually describe this as just a lifestyle disorder, but is it only a lifestyle disorder? In fact, recently obesity has been described as a clinical condition. So there is something between a simple lifestyle condition and a clinical condition. Clinical condition means you are actually giving an entity of disease to this 
So that means you, you try to prevent the disease, you try to treat the outcomes of the disease and we increase the awareness regarding the disease and that's what this, uh, this talk is all about. Uh, different organizations across the world are now accepting the fact that obesity is no longer just a condition where, where people just live with it. It's a, it's a clinical condition which grave, grave uh, outcomes which can be prevented, can be treated. Uh, it's associated with multiple complications which could be metabolic like type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes. It could be associated with uh, you know gynecological com complications like infertility and uh, so-called pre uh, 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 PCOS, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. On the mechanical front, it could be associated with uh, osteoarthritis, gout, etc. On the cardiovascular front, it can lead to stroke, uh, heart attack, etc. Sleep disorders like sleep apnea, which is nowadays found to be very common. In fact, in COVID time also, we have seen that younger people died due to COVID only when they were obese. So it increases the risk from uh, 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 risk of death in many other conditions. So it needs to be tackled primarily, not leaving aside till the person develops obesity related, related complications, advanced complications. And uh, actually, people, when they become obese, they start thinking that it is all their fault. Or people uh, surrounding them start talking in that line. You know, they said, you have eaten more, you are not exercising, that's why you are obese. Yes, that is true. To a large extent, obesity is, is, a, is a fallout of your lifestyle, the way you live your lifestyle, you live your life. But nevertheless, it also has got some other issues like, uh, you know, genetic and epigenetic issues which you inherit through their generation. For example, our friends here, uh, 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 Ahmad Bhai and Safraz Bhai and the Safraz Bhai's daughter, they have obesity that's probably their genetic origin and the, 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 the inheritance of the gene is going through the generations and, and in the right atmosphere or you can say the wrong atmosphere where food is plenty and exercise is less which is True for all urban Indians uh, or semi-urban Indians, you can say obesity is becoming more and more prevalent. So we cannot, you know, disown the genes which are there inherited, but we can actually modify the environment. So when you know that somebody is more susceptible, like surfers, surfers daughter, you know, they can be more, you know, careful about combating obesity and eating the right kind of food and doing the right kind of activities, etc. And moreover, uh, obesity is also related to uh, various other disorders, but then that is a rare uh, thing like endocrine disorders. And there are monogenic obesities where you have gene mutations leading to obesity in the family. Again, that is very rare. That is not a big problem, epidemiological problem. But epigenetic obesity, which has been inherited by generations for various multiple causes of a genetic changes is more important for country like India. And if you prevent obesity at a very early age, then you prevent a lot of other complications which I have already narrated. Then uh, apart from li lifestyle and exercise, nowadays we have got a lot of uh, good, good drugs which can uh, prevent obesity. Although they have the story of uh, pharmaceutical or pharmacological treatment for obesity is not very a good, you know, the story is uh, there are a lot of issues regarding many various drugs which have got side effects and uh, more importantly, a sustained loss of weight is not maintained if you use these drugs for long, long years. But off late, we have got uh, various molecules, especially uh, something called GLP-1 receptor analog, which has been used in, in, in the United States as anti-obesity drug and they are also used in India as anti-diabetic drug where, which can potentially cause weight loss are available and the pharmacological front is quite promising and, and we have seen that with the use of this drug within 5-6 years uh, the longevity increases, the stroke and heart attack are prevented even to, to, to some extent the kidney disease also can be prevented and many other obesity related uh, events can be, can be uh, cut down or prevented or halted in their progression. So, uh, so it's not all blank now. Science is there to help in obesity treatment. Having said that, we must understand that 
the people's effort to prevent obesity at the primordial level and in the primary level that means uh, at, at the very beginning in the in, in, in fact on the infant stage or in the childhood stage is very important I mean, society must be prepared to combat this otherwise we are going to see uh, you know a lot of issues in our society in the coming generations so uh, this is what i wanted to tell you uh, about the future uh, future of drugs which are going to help us but at the same time the role we should play as 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 uh, citizens of this country to prevent obesity and society as as a whole and and uh, policy makers in particular must think about uh, ways and means uh, by which they can stimulate the population to uh, walk more use public transportation there should be avenues for you know having a stroll around your home we need to make more you know wide open spaces and we need to encourage people incentivize people to be more active so that we can uh, bring down obesity thank you